Hello and welcome to another Cards Unbarred episode. My name's Ryan and in today's episode I'm going to show you the two-player only line battler card game Drones vs. Seagulls designed by Delphine Robert and Leo Blandin. I have been absolutely in love with this game recently. Uh, it's similar to the games like Shot and Totten, Rift Force, and Battle Line and it's quick, it's silly, it's a lot of fun so let's go to the table and I'll show you how to play. Drones vs. Seagulls comes with 22 cards 11 identical cards for the seagulls as well as the drones that consists of two ones, three twos, three threes, two fours, and one five. The game also comes with 12 double-sided outpost tokens, one side that has a majority of blue circle and one that has a majority side of red circles. And taking a closer look at the cards here, you can see the numbers on the cards in all four corners. That is referring to the strength of the card. So during the how to play section, whenever I'm referring to a card's strength, it's always the card's value itself. You can see the back of the drone card here, and now we're looking at the seagull cards. Very similar layouts to the drone cards, but of course having the seagulls on it, which personally I always like picking the seagulls, because look at this number five card, easily my favorite card in the game, and I love the back of the seagull cards as you can see here as well. To set up for a game of drones versus seagulls, hand each player the 11 cards associated with the side that they chose, either the drones or the seagulls. Next, lay out seven random outpost tokens in the middle of the table, alternating colors from blue and red. However, the first time you play the game, it is recommended to use these seven tokens that you can see on the video now, but you don't need to have them in the exact order as you see them, they can be randomized. We will go over all of the powers on all the tokens a little bit later, but for now, the player that has the fewer tokens with their color face up is the lead player. So in this case, there's four blue and three red. So the red or drones player would be the first player. When it is your turn, you will choose to play any one card from your hand face up into any outpost location on your side of the board. So in this case, let's say the drone player decides to play this one drone to that outpost. Once you play a card to a location, you always need to check the strength on both sides of the line to determine who is in control of that outpost. So in this case, the red drone player just played a one to this outpost and the seagull player has a strength of zero. So the drone player is currently winning and they have conquered this outpost and they will flip the token over to show they have gained control. If you flip a token over to your side on your turn, you must trigger its ability. I'll go over all the abilities of every token in just a little bit, but this one allows you to move one of your cards on your side to any other outpost. Again, an ability must be activated, so they must move this card to a different outpost. So let's just say they decide to move this guy over here. Again, you check for strength, it's one to zero, so the drone player is currently winning, however the token is already on their side anyways, so it doesn't flip over, which means the ability on the token does not trigger. Because there is no other ability triggering on their turn, they are done, it would go to the next player, so now the seagull gets a chance to play any one card that they want. And let's say they decide to play this two, to that location where the drone player currently is. By doing so, again, we check strength at the location. They have a strength of two, the drone has a strength of one, so the seagull player is controlling this outpost. They will flip it over, and because they're flipping the token over to their color, they must trigger the ability of the location. This one allows them to take another turn, so they would get to go again, picking any one card from their hand, playing it to another outpost. You are allowed to play multiple cards to a single outpost. There is no limit to the number of cards you can play to an outpost. And you can always play to an outpost that already has your color face up on that location. Again, you just won't flip a token over, so you won't trigger any ability. So for example, the Seagull player could choose to play another two card here, creating a strength of four to the drones player's strength of one. The token is already on their side, so nothing flips over, but now it's a little bit harder for the drone player to take control of that outpost. Again, it now goes back to the drone player. They choose any one card to play. So let's say they decide to play 
this three over here. Checking strength, it's three to zero. They've gained control, flip the token over, trigger its ability. So play will continue like this, players going back and forth, checking strength, flipping over tokens, triggering their abilities, etc., until one player gains control of all seven outposts, in which case they immediately win the round. And this game is best two out of three. So essentially three rounds in total, you're trying to win two of those rounds. However, if you end up getting to the point of where there are no cards left in players' hands, it just comes down to who has a majority of the outposts in control. So just going into more detail on that, if on a player's turn they play their last card without ending the round, their opponent will get one more turn before you calculate the majority of outposts and who would win the round. So let's just say right now the drones player is up and they have this three drone card left on their turn and they decide to play it to this location flipping that card over which lets them destroy an opponent's card and let's just say they decide to destroy this card here after they've triggered anything that they need to do they choose one outpost that they currently control and move it over to their side so now when the other player gets to take a turn, they cannot gain control of that outpost. It's guaranteed for the, in this case, the drone player. So when the seagull plays a card, they must go somewhere else. This sort of allows it because being the last player in a turn without having the other person being able to rebuttal can be pretty powerful. So it at least guarantees that they can't get an outright majority or trigger off of whatever special one that you take. But after you choose the outpost to place on your side, your opponent gets one last turn and then majority is calculated. And whoever has the most outpost tokens flipped up on their side would win the round. After the round has ended from either condition, return all 11 cards back to both players' hands, reset the seven outpost tokens, making sure they're alternating blue and red, and you want to put the player who won the previous round with the fewer tokens face up as they will be the first player for the next round. So in this case, the Seagulls player would have won round one, so they would have the three tokens playing the first card for the next round. When you reorder these tokens, you can do them in any order you like. You can randomize the tokens again. So again, for your first game, it's recommended to use these seven. But if you're playing different games, you could have in round two completely new tokens in any orientation that you want. There really is no rule against which ones you can or can't have. Again, you just always have to make sure they're alternating when you first set it up. So going over the different outpost tokens, we're gonna just start on the left and work our way all the way over. I know we already went over a couple, but we're just gonna go through them in detail now. And then we'll go over the other ones that aren't currently in play. So starting with the one on the left, we have the destroy an opponent's card. So let's say it's the uh, drone player's turn and they decide to play their three drone, three strength to zero, flip it over. They get to destroy any one opponent card and remove it from the game for this round only. So at the end of the round, after somebody wins, if the game isn't over, that card will go back into the Seagull player's hand. The next token is equality, strength wins. So normally in this game, you have to have outright more strength than your opponent. So in this case, if it was four to four, the Seagull player, if they just play this card here, wouldn't get to flip it over because it's equal strength. You must be higher strength than your opponent to flip the token. However, if this token is in play, when it is on your side, it means you win whenever there's a tie. So let's just say the three blue was here. And in this situation, red is already in control. They'll play a three card here. It's strength three to three. This would flip over in their favor. This card allows you to move, or sorry, this token allows you to move any one of your cards from your side of the board anywhere you want. So move this card over there. This one allows you to take another turn. So if the seagull player played a five here, flips that token over, 
they just get to immediately take another turn right after this one, playing another card to any location they want and triggering its ability. Next one up we have here is recruiting one of your opponent's cards. So the drone player plays this three over here, flips that token, picks any one card from their opponent's side and takes it straight across, recruiting it on their end. So they'll take this three, move it over here. Again, it only goes straight across. You can't move this card and recruit it somewhere else on your side. And remember, flip over if you have control of that outpost. Next one over here allows you to move one card of your opponent. So Seagull player plays a three here, flips it over. They pick any one of your opponent's cards to move to a different outpost. Again, recheck the outpost you move the card from to see if you now have control and if it's not in your color, flipping it over and triggering that outpost's ability. Coming to the last one over here is swapping two of your cards on your side from wherever they are to new locations. Flipping over any tokens as you trigger those new locations. This is a good time to clarify if there are ever two tokens that need to be flipped, the active player gets to choose the order in which they flip them. So let me set up a scenario here real quick. All right, so we just got ourselves a little setup here and it is the drone player, it is their turn. They're gonna play this four to the move a card outpost, which they gain control of. They are going to move their other four in play over to the destroy a card outpost. They are currently going to control this outpost because they have a strength of four versus a strength of three, but they just left this outpost, which the Seagull player is now winning three to zero. But because the drone player is the current and active player, they get to choose the order of how these tokens flip over. So they're gonna choose to flip this token first, which allows them to destroy an opponent's card and they're gonna to choose to destroy this Seagull 3. And because this ability is now completed, then you check for the other outposts, but there is no card here, so the drones player actually keeps control of it. So those are some things you wanna keep track and keep in mind when moving cards and moving tokens around. You need to check strength at every location once you make those new moves, but you always, as the active player, get to choose which outpost triggers and you trigger that entire outpost's ability before moving to another outpost. All right, so going over the last five outpost tokens here real quick, starting with the one on the left, this allows you to swap two of your opponent's cards from the spaces they're in. So let's say the drone player plays that two, flips that token over, they pick any two cards on their opponent's side and have them swap spots where they currently are. Next up is the moving two or more of your cards from one outpost to another. So let's say the drone player plays this three, is winning four to two, flips that token over. They can now pick one of their outposts where they have at least two or more cards to move to another outpost. So in this case, they have these two locations. So they could pick these two cards, moving them over here or anywhere else really, or these two cards, moving them anywhere else as well. If you had, let's say they had these four cards at an outpost and they chose this location, you must choose a minimum of two, but you can move as many of them as you'd like. So you could choose to move three of them or all four of them, but again, a minimum of two. This next location here allows you to flip one of your opponent's cards over so that it faces its backside up, making it so that it's only a value of one. So let's say the Seagull player plays this two here, flips that token over, and they decide to pick this card over here, which was a value five, and it is now flipped over, and it becomes a value of one. This token here does the same thing this one does, but it's moving two or more cards from your opponent's side. So if the Seagull player decided to play that four, seven to six, they gain control. They can choose this stack or this stack, Again, just like this one, moving at minimum two, but as many as they'd like if there are more from one outpost to another. 
And this last one here, which kind of seems like the most complicated, but it's really not that bad, is you get to choose one of your cards on your side to destroy and trigger that outpost's ability, regardless of what side it's actually showing on the token. So let's say the drone player plays this three, winning three to two, flips that token over. They could destroy this card that's now only a value one to trigger this location's ability, which allows them to move an opponent's card from some location. Maybe they move this four over there. So now they're gaining control back of this one to trigger that ability. And as you can see, the fun little combos that keep coming up from this game. But those are all the tokens. And like I said, the very first game you play, it's recommended to use those seven at the beginning. Otherwise, after you've played a few times, it's great to just mix match, shuffle them in, and just kind of see what crazy combinations you can get. There are some that make the game play a little bit longer where you go the full 11 cards, playing them on each side. There's the ones though that have, when you get the destroy and you have the destroy an opponent's card, cards get removed quicker, so strengths end up being a little bit lower. So those rounds can be a little bit faster. Of course, the one that has the go again makes you play two cards usually in a turn, so you're getting through cards quicker. But there's just fun little combos that can be had depending on the different tokens and different combinations you, you see on the board. So as you may have noticed, the box cover is in French, saying drones versus goelon. And that is because there's currently only a French version of this game. So the rules within the box will unfortunately only be in French. However, there are English rules available, which I'll get to in one moment. But you can currently buy the game from Philibert, as you can see on your screen right now. And Philibert is a fantastic website. They have a lot of games that aren't readily available on your typical US sites. Uh, but I'll put a link in the description uh, for this video to where you can buy this game on Philibert. But like I said, there are English rules available, and that is because the game is currently in beta on Board Game Arena, or BGA. And this can give you the chance to try the game before you buy it. And to just show you where the English rules are real quick, if you scroll down on the main page of Drones vs. Seagulls and click on the Rules PDF section, here you go, you'll see the rules will load up and fully in English. But going back to the BGA page here real quick, I just wanna show you a game in action. This is one of the games that I was playing when it was in alpha. And just gonna click through here just so you can see what it looks like as far as the interface and how it works. It's really nice and simple. It tells you when a player must play their card, when they have an action on one of the outposts, and it gives you all of the history on the right side as well. Uh, so really nice, really simple. But yeah, there you go. Just a sneak peek at Drones vs. Seagulls online. And of course, if you think this game is right for you, as I mentioned, you can get it on Philibert right now. Uh, at least as of December 29th, it is currently still in stock. And hopefully a true English version will show up in the future. Otherwise, that's everything you need to know to play and even buy Drones vs. Seagulls. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will get to them as soon as I can. Thanks so much for watching.